I have a confession to make. I had no idea what Go was until about 48 hours ago. Yes, I had heard the name thrown around occasionally on the internet or in the comment section. And yes, I may have stumbled across this interesting blue gopher mascot while purchasing a pack of Linux stickers. But the point remains that I had no idea that it was a powerful, lightweight programming language that's super popular right now. And not even to mention that it was co-developed by Ken Thompson, the Unix man himself, who's perhaps one of the greatest computer programmers of all time. I mean, what the heck? How did I not know about this language. Now, Go is generally used for web applications, cloud services, and command line tools. But of course, I was anxious to test it out for myself and just see how viable it was for developing games. So I hopped over to Go's website, downloaded the installer, and got it all set up on my computer. It was, it was really easy. Next, I had to decide which framework I wanted to use. And after just skimming through an article, I picked the top one. And it's called Ebit Engine? Ebit Engine? I don't, something? Someone help me. Either way, it's self-described as a dead simple 2D engine for Go. And I don't know, it was used to make this bear restaurant game, so I was convinced. So anywho, I had to run this little command to check if my environment was set up correctly. And you know what? It was. Look at this spinning. It's making me nauseous. So we're all set and ready to start programming, but we're missing the most crucial part. Um, and what was that again? Oh yeah, the game idea. So I recently went on a trip to DC with my family and saw a real Saturn V F1 engine. Now I'm not some mega nerd, I'm not some everyday astronaut, but I do enjoy a good rocket launch. So standing next to what is considered the most powerful single combustion rocket engine ever built was pretty inspiring. And it made me want to make my own rocket launching game. Think Kerbal Space Program, but actually nothing like that at all. Really just that wind up Shy Guy game from uh, Mario Party 2. So essentially my game idea is to have you button smash your keyboard as quickly as possible before the time runs out. After that happens, your rocket will launch and you'll see how high it went. It's pretty simple and uh, hopefully I don't destroy my keyboard in the process. So I created a little folder for my game and then I made a go.mod file. Essentially this just checks all the dependencies. Don't, don't worry about it, just make sure you do it. After that, I referenced some dependencies and then I wrote some code just to draw a window. After that, I just ran this go mod tidy command and it just checks to make sure all the dependencies are good. So it is, it's very tidy, I like it. And with all that, we have a window and hello world. Hello. Next, I was anxious to just draw an image, so I decided the background would be an easy one to start with. So I did. And of course, I just do that again to draw the player. Right now, I'm gonna use this gopher sprite as placeholder. Um, just don't look too deeply in his eyes. At this point, I was pretty excited, so I decided to move on to the movement. <laughs> See what I did there. And for this, it was pretty easy. I just used this thing called OP, which stands for Options Objects, a, we a weird name. But essentially, it just allows you to move the X and Y of an image. And then I just create a variable and I change the value. And boom, there we go. But instead of moving the player, we're going to move the background. So I made the background sprite much taller and then I gave it a gradient. So as you go higher up into the sky, it's going to look darker. And the whole reason we're going to move the background in the first place is I don't want to create a viewport system for this. So instead of moving the player and creating a viewport, if we move the background, it just gives the illusion that the player is moving up. At this point, I loaded in a custom font and I drew some text on the screen showing how high your rocket gopher currently is. Now, obviously moving forever is not the point of this game. So I decided to add a power value, speed, and some gravity. So now your little gopher starts out on the ground. You can press Z to spam your power. And then when you press space, you see it launch into the air and unfortunately crash back down. Now, essentially with the main game loop done, it's finally time for us to make some artwork. And when it came to actually designing the rocket, I didn't want to just copy, you know me, I had to make something unique. Essentially, I just combined a new Glenn and a Falcon Heavy and called it a day. Though I sprinkled in a few details from NASA's SLS because people hate it so much. So after designing the rocket and adding it to the game, I also redesigned the background that now looks like a launch pad and I threw that in the game as well. And what's ironic about this is I made this art during the Starship 9 live stream. I didn't even know it was gonna launch. I just stumbled upon it. And so it was very fitting to work on a rocket as I was watching one. And so now that we had some artwork, it was time for the finishing touches. I made it so when the game starts, it says ready, set, go. And then I created a countdown timer from 10 that shows you how much time you have to smash the button before the rocket launches. Next, I made a little dotted line marker that shows your highest score. So when you pass it up, you can see it and you can feel proud about yourself. I made a few extra additions like these clouds and also sound effects. And last but not least, I had Bonzo Bean Machine make another wonderful bossa nova track to help just set the mood as you vigorously destroy your keyboard. And with all that said, the game was done. And this is how it turned out. Overall, I thought it was a really fun game idea. And I'm glad I got to use all this information that I learned at the National Air and Space Museum. 
Using Go was really fun and I can definitely see how it's influenced by C. And even though Ebitengen's documentation was on the lighter side, I was impressed for the most part with how intuitive it was. With that said, because Go is a newer language, relatively speaking, you know, in contrast to Python or Java, it requires a little bit more elbow grease. I personally would recommend it to someone who already has some programming experience or someone who's just willing to put in the extra time to learn it. And speaking of programming, if you wanna learn how to program and you don't know where to start, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data, analysis, programming, and AI. And one thing I really like about it is Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Not to mention that Brilliant makes it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone with fun lessons that you can do whenever you have the time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can always level up on the go in just minutes. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real world applications. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag and drop editor. Learn essential coding elements from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. And most importantly, develop your mind to think like a programmer and begin to write complex programs to build games and applications. I mean, hey, yep, you got me on games. With that said, if you don't know where to start, Brilliant is a great start. And to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash goodgist or scan the QR code on screen, or you can just click the link in the description. There's, there's plenty of ways, people. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so check it out. Now, if you want to play around with my code or even download the Go wallpaper I randomly decided to make for this video, then check out the links in the description. As always, let me know what language you'd like to see me use next, and don't say French. I will, I will smack you. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time for another game dev adventure. Peace.